your thoughts around investor day dave um obviously you've been yeah. a long time tesla investor you know the story really well where's your head at yeah so this past week I actually been uh, reflecting a bit back on tesla's history and i remember back in like 2013 or 14 i was writing some posts on tesla motors club and the theory was Tesla is betting their future on this Gen 3 called car, they called it at that time. <clears throat> uh, 30, basically a $30,000, $35,000 car, like a uh, BMW um, uh, 3 Series competitor. And Elon was saying that they could possibly sell like 300 or 500,000 of these cars in 2020. And that uh, people were basically debating whether or not that's possible and all this stuff. And for me, I felt the likelihood was, was super high because the Model S was so much better than anything else out there. They just needed to shrink the car, right? Make it more affordable. <clears throat> and my thoughts were already on the next stage, which was Gen 4. And so mm. my thesis or hypothesis back in 2014-ish was Tesla would likely be successful with Model 3 or you know their third gen. And that would set them up for their Gen 4 car. And their Gen 4 car would be this cheap kind of Corolla competitor type of, you know, that that class and would set them up to become the largest auto manufacturer in the world. And I look back on that and I got so much heat and flack from that because people just <laughs> yes. didn't. They, they thought that the Gen 3 car was was going to fail or was, you know, like even early Model S owners, a lot of them thought that the chance of bankruptcy was quite high and that they would have a car that there would be no company behind it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and then as we enter into Gen, into this tomorrow's announcement, basically what Tesla is saying is they're saying, hey, we've got this Model 3, Model Y, the platform, but that's not enough. And here's our next big platform, our next big push that will take us over the next 10 years, right, of ramping and rollout. And this is the platform that will take us to become the highest volume automaker in the world, right? This is the kind of turning point. And Tesla is announcing this tomorrow, right? And they've actually held back a lot of their signs and clues. Like Elon has slipped a little bit talking about their next generation vehicle platform. But generally speaking, they haven't uh, really addressed it, saying what's after Model 3 and Model Y in detail, right? And so tomorrow is, is the next chapter. And this is actually significant because Elon has been talking about the this Model 3 um, platform since like 2013 or 14. And even before that, actually, Tesla has been built on the whole, you know, 35,000, whatever dollar Model 3, uh, Model Y dream. And that has led us all the way to 2023. And so the question is, okay, what's after this? And so Tesla is um, set up to show us and a, a super ambitious plan to drop the cost of the car into the next level below you know, this entry level luxury sedan, which is a Model 3 and, the, and then the Model Y into the more economy class cars. But the, the, the Trojan horse I see in this is that Tesla is not an economy car maker, right? It's as if you had, let's say BMW or Mercedes, you know, offer a $20,000 car that was as good as like, you know, almost as good as their, their three series. It's like, there's no competition against a Corolla mm -hmm. Versus a Mercedes, but even more so, Tesla bringing down their cost of their cars into their next category, let's say the twenty to thirty thousand dollar category, it's completely unfair because they're dealing with these economy cars that have completely compromised on everything about the car. Right? It's all about costs. If you drive a Corolla, it's like you can't compare it with a Model Three or even even a BMW or Mercedes or whatever entry level class um, sports sedan. And so that's what I think the bigger picture is, is, is I don't think there's any chance for these economy IC cars anymore. Like that's what the, the announcement is about tomorrow. It's about the end of the IC economy car. It's not going to go over, go away overnight. It's not like a quick right. thing. It's going to take, you know, many, many years over time. But as Tesla ramps the next generation vehicle platform and they get that sweet spot, you know, 20, 30,000, it's like, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really the, the beginning of it. It's going to get weird. I think it's going to get yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. You bringing this up sort of raises this question that, that I, I did a video on this, I think last week, where if you think about the, that pricing level, at least in the United States, if I use the United States as an example, name me a car that costs less than 30 thousand dollars that's actually compelling to drive 
or compelling to own. That is not just a point A to point B transportation system that, uh, you know, is going to basically, like you said, just prioritize costs. You don't get any extra features with it, really, that I can think of. Again, I could be wrong that I can think of. And people, I think, have have gotten very used to the fact that they could drive, a, you know, well, I'm going to buy a Corolla because I just need something to get me from point A to point B reliably and cheaply. That's why I'm getting a Honda Civic. And they're great for what they do. They're phenomenal. But what are two things that are there are weaknesses in that uh, sort of thing. So the, the consumer, you don't really get something that I would argue is compelling that can bring sort of that love and joy that I think a lot of Tesla owners agree on that the cars bring to them. That's that's sort of very unique with that experience. And then two, the manufacturers don't make any money on those cars. They make all their money on SUVs and pickups. And so they have no incentives to make these cars better because as soon as they do, they price themselves out of competition or they end up losing more money or you know not no longer breaking even on those, on those vehicles. And so I think as long as Tesla can keep uh, a, a, a semblance of driving dynamics that are that are close to or equal to an EV, which obviously they will because it's an electric vehicle, and you compare that to a Civic or a Toyota Corolla, and you ask somebody to drive both cars, it's going to be very obvious which one's going to be better. You're going to have the screen for infotainment. You're obviously going to have the safety record. You're going to have access to the supercharger network. You're not going to have any maintenance. You're not going to be uh, filling up with gas, which costs more than electricity, right? So you can start seeing <laughs> how these different things uh, start to stack up uh, against each other. But I guess the the big question becomes, is Tesla actually going to be able to come out with a, say, twenty five to thirty thousand dollar car that is compelling? And from your from what you just walked through, it seems like you're quite, quite convinced that's the case. Uh, is that is that true? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I think the, the ra rationale is actually how Tesla des designs their cars, where it's not an option to release something mediocre that's like a Corolla. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's just not an option. Like Tesla doesn't you know, consider that it's got to be a great car. And so what Tesla considers a great car is, is not an economy, a typical economy car, you know, it's, and that, that's the other thing is a lot of people thought the model three early back in the day, let's say 2014, 15, they thought that it would be, it would, it would be an economy car in, in a sense of its trim and its feel. And I remember I was like, no, Tesla, that's not the strategy here. Tesla's not trying to make an economy car. They're actually going after, right, this BMW 3 Series market, <clears throat> that entry-level sports sedan market, and it will be a luxury car. And, you know, there were actually debate early on back in the day. It was like, well, what if Tesla services these economy, you know, let's say Model 3 cars with in their service centers together with Model S and Xs, it'll be um, a, a, a big downgrade of reputation. You'll have these mm. cheap economy cars next to these luxury S and I remember cars, that. <laughs> and owners will feel like, what the, what the heck, you know? It's like our luxury brand is shot. And I think it's a, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what Tesla, their approach is. It's like, no, the, the three and why it, they were meant to be, you know, luxury cars. That's why Tesla services S, X, three and Y, it doesn't downgrade their brand by having three and Y. It's because they have standards. And here's the thing is, I think this next generation car, it's not going to be this like cheap economy feeling car, right? It's going to mm -hmm. feel like a Tesla. And that's the biggest kind of um, knockout punch that I don't think people are expecting um, mm. is this is a real Tesla car. It's not like a cheap, you know, separate brand, like a Yaris brand or I don't know, whatever brand, you know, right. that, like yeah, they're not the Rio, making a, the a cheaper Rio. brand. Yeah. It, that's not Tesla's uh, uh, MO. Um, they're going, they're keeping their standards high. And that's why, um, yeah, I don't think anyone in the auto market in the, in terms of OEMs, they're not prepared for this. They, I think there's a misunderstanding of what Tesla's about. They think, you know, Tesla's more like, like them. They think that Tesla's going to, you know, cheapen the car and make like a Corolla. Right? And that's the thing. Tesla's not going to make a Corolla. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will make a luxury car in the 20 to $30,000 price range, but it will be luxury and you can't compare it with anything else. Right. In that price range. Yeah. So are you so are you confident that they'll actually show this vehicle tomorrow? Or do you think they'll show plans? How, how are you thinking about this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's to their advantage to uh, release the design of the vehicle. I think it's it's an investor day. And I think if they just show their the back end, the infrastructure behind right this car, meaning you have the design of the car, but you've got um, you've got the the design of the factory, the machines, the how how it's manufactured and put together, and so the the floor space, how much capex it takes. And I think that's what Elon was hinting at in the last couple earnings call, calls. Basically, like half the cost in terms of Tesla's cost, um, twice the output 
you know, of a factory and I mean, half the factory space, all what all that translates to is like, it's going to be much cheaper to build in terms of building new factories, because you'll have half the factory space, double the output, all this stuff. I don't know if Tesla will really be able to achieve those exact marks, because I think they're super crazy ambitious, but I'd rather that Tesla tries to to go for these crazy, you know, marks. Um, I think that's the goal, at, at least that Tesla has. Yeah, I think that the focus is how will Tesla drop their costs so much, let's say up to half? How will Tesla drop the factory space by up to half? How will they increase the output, you know, by double? All this, all these, how are they going to do it? Is basically a bunch of problem solving and engineering. It's like, okay, we have this problem. Here's what we're what we've done to to radically, you know, shrink the the factory space or increase output, etc. Um, yeah, so you're gonna have probably a massive uh, decrease in the amount of of robots, of welding robots, all that stuff. Um, massive shortening of the actual general assembly time to, it takes to manually like put stuff in the car. This is gonna require a massive complete redesign of how a car is built. Um, so I would expect a lot of giga casting or machines um, in terms of involvement and a redesign of how the, the actual car is built in the end, assembled, right? And the, the amount of human um, labor involved too. All this is going to be radically different. So Tesla wants to show here is our game plan, right? Here's how we did it in terms of the mm. design. And I think Tesla is probably... <clears throat> at least 75% done with this, you know, in terms of the, the whole thing. I would imagine by the end of this year, they'll finish up, um, you know, every all their designs and and um, probably shoot for production maybe second half of next year. That's my guess. Mm. Um, I'd love to find out more details, you know. Um, but the question mark I have is, is when is this going to be a robo-taxi only vehicle platform? Right. Or is this going to be something people can drive as well? Yeah, is, is Tesla going to sell this stuff? I mean, are they going to take control in, in terms of having their own robotaxi fleet? Or can people buy it and lease it? Or or I don't know, just so many yeah. questions regarding you know, yeah, for why sure. is this a robotaxi you know, vehicle platform and not just a, a cheaper car platform? Right? And Tesla has been very intentional to to make sure that people understand this is a robotaxi vehicle platform, not just right. a cheaper car vehicle platform. So yeah, interesting.